السلام آه عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته آه انا مروة عبد الله I am Marwa عبد الله professor of dermatology in Shams University and I am going to talk now about the second part of the common pyogenic skin infections and um, these are our intended learning outcomes as we discussed it in part one and uh, as a reminder these are the specific diseases caused by direct infection of the skin by staph aureus and strep pyogenes three diseases caused by uh, both staph and or strep, impetigo, contagiosum, ecthyma, cellulitis, and um, uh, on the other hand, folliculitis, frontulosis, carbuncle, and acute paronychia are caused only by staph, while erysipelas, bacterial intertrigo, and angular stomatitis are caused by strep genes only. Let's have a look at the hair follicle anatomy. Um, the hair follicle uh, is consi uh, consisting of the hair shaft, uh, and uh, the hair follicle. The hair follicle uh, is divided into three parts. Uh, the most superficial part is the infundibulum, which ends uh, at uh, the opening of uh, the sebaceous gland. It starts at the epidermis and ends at the opening of the sebaceous gland. The isthmus is the region between the um, uh, opening of the sebaceous gland and the bulge area and the bulge area is where the erector pili muscle attaches uh, to the, from the hair follicle to the epidermis and the bulge area contains the stem cells for the hair follicle. Then uh, the lower part of the uh, hair follicle, uh, which contains uh, the dermal papilla and the, derma, the hair matrix cells. Any infection above the infundibulum is, is superficial infection of the hair follicle, while below that is deep infection. Folliculitis is inflammation of the hair follicle as in the name implies. The predisposing factors for staphylococcal folliculitis include occlusion, maceration, hyperhydration of the skin, and shaving, plucking, or waxing, use of topical corticosteroids, a hot and humid weather, atopic dermatitis, diabetes mellitus, in addition to the other predisposing factors we have mentioned before in um, the uh, skin resistance uh, to infection uh, uh, recording. The folliculitis is divided into acute and subacute or chronic. The acute may be superficial as acute superficial folliculitis of Bockhart, who was the first one to describe it, uh, also known as Bockhart's empatigo. There is also acute deep folliculitis, which is the most common form, and uh, the other names are for ankylosis, boils, or abscess. Um, there is also the carbuncle, which are contiguous inflammation or infection of uh, hair, fo uh, hair uh, follicles, and uh, the subacute or chronic folliculitis is divided into either psychosis barbie, which is going to be discussed and folliculitis keloidalis, acne keloid, and this folliculitis keloidalis is also known as folliculitis keloidalis nuki. I am going to show you pictures in the face-to-face -face session. Okay, acute superficial folliculitis of Bockhart or Bockhart's impetigo is characterized by dome-shaped pustules at the follicular orifice, which are pierced by a hair. Because they are very superficial, they crust and the crust falls off, leaving no scar. Acute deep folliculitis is common. It is also called boils or furuncles. The initial lesions uh, are usually uh, single or multiple, hard, tender nodules, uh, which enlarge, become more painful, and uh, pus appears, and uh, the pus appears uh, in the center of the lesion, uh, because, um, you know, it is like any abscess, um, uh, it, it, first there is a cellulitic stage, and then pus forms, and then pus discharges through the uh, area of least resistance, which is the skin. Healing after the discharge of the necrotic core may be complicated by scarring and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Actually, um, an acute deep folliculitis or frankulosis uh, affects the lower part of the dermis and that's why it is hard and nodular and uh, it, is, um, it heals by scarring because it is deep. 
Psychosis Barbie and Pseudofolliculites Barbie. What is Psychosis Barbie and what is Pseudofolliculites Barbie? On the left side, you can see Psychosis Barbie picture, and on the right side, you can see Pseudofolliculites Barbie picture. Let's discuss them. So, Psychosis Barbie um, is caused by Staph aureus. It is subacute folliculitis, which is characterized by recurrent, discrete, inflammatory papules or pustules in the beard area, which are pierced by hairs. Uh, irrespective of shaving, they uh, are recurrent. Um, if uh, the neighboring follicles are affected, a plaque uh, is formed, which is studded with pustules. And the treatment here is topical and systemic antibiotics. While pseudofolliculitis barbie is caused by ingrown hairs. Hairs um, do not come out of the uh, hair follicle or they come out and then pierce again the skin and uh, they form uh, some sort of a foreign body reaction. And uh, this foreign body reaction is uh, an inflammation uh, which presents by papules, pustules or nodules that are related to this ingrown hair. Uh, it can occur on any shaved area in the body, not only on, on the beard area, and it is uh, treated by proper grooming. Now we are going to talk about a streptococcal infection, which is streptococcal intertrigo. Intertrigo means inflammation of the skin folds, and it affects mostly infants and children. It uh, present, the, patient, the child presents uh, by occasional irritability and low-grade fever, um, uh, but this is not commonly seen. It might be without any systemic manifestations. Uh, and uh, intertrigenous folds of the neck, axillary, or inguinal spaces are affected. Um, the most common is the neck, actually, and um, uh, it presents by intense, fiery red, sharply demarcated erythematous patches, which are characterized by distinctive foul odor and absence of satellite lesions, which uh, discriminates it from um, a candidal infection. A 10-day course of oral penicillin is usually effective. Now we are going to move to uh, the nail anatomy uh, in order to understand paronychia. Paronychia is inflammation of the nail fold. And uh, here we can see number one is the free edge, number two is the nail plate, number three is the nail fold, and the nail fold is divided into lateral nail fold as a number. Three, and uh, number 10 is the proximal nail fold. Uh, the lunula is the semicircular, uh, a little bit uh, uh, whitish area seen at the proximal part of the nail plate. And this corresponds to the distal margin of the uh, uh, nail matrix cells. Um, the cuticle is a very thin uh, piece of skin which connects the nail fold to the nail plate. Uh, the hyponychium is underneath the na nail uh, plate, and there's the nail groove number seven, which is between the nail plate and the lateral uh, nail fold. Uh, number eight is the nail bed, where the place on which uh, the nail plate resides. And number nine is the nail matrix cells, and the nail matrix cells, as I said, uh, uh, are uh, extending to the lunula, but they are present mainly underneath the proximal nail fold. So paronychia is inflammation of the nail fold. It may be acute or chronic. Here we are going to discuss acute paronychia. Acute bacterial paronychia is common, especially in children, and follows minor trauma to the nail. It is mainly caused by staph, and the affected digit is red, swollen, and painful. Compression of the nail fold may drain pus. Treatment of uh, pyogenic infections, if it is mild, topical antibiotics. It, if it is uh, severe or recurrent, it is by systemic antibiotics. For streptococcal infections, the primary uh, the drug of choice are penicillins. And uh, for staph, it's the beta-lactamase resistant antibiotics. Uh, the topical antibiotics which work best for uh, streptococci and staphylococci are fusidic acid uh, cream or ointment and 
neoprostine ointment. Um, uh, there is also the potassium permanganate, 1 over 8,000, which is an antiseptic solution uh, that is um, very useful uh, in, uh, if we have uh, oozing lesions or if we have a, um, a crust and we want to remove it, we can warm it up uh, in a water bath and uh, uh, apply it to the crusts uh, um, as in, for example, in the part one, as we discussed in, uh, in patago contagiosum or in eczema. And uh, also we can uh, remove the crusts by other measures like warm olive oil or hydrogen peroxide. So we, here we come to the end of our pyogenic infection uh, lecture. And uh, please be ready with your questions for our next face-to-face -face session. Thank you and goodbye.